Hello, Chinese foodies, and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered what kind of tools you might need in the kitchen in order to make authentic Chinese foods? Well, today, we're going to be introducing some of the most important and some of the most unique tools that you might find in the Chinese kitchen and things that you might be able to use yourself to make these delicious foods from home. All right, first, we're gonna start with a tool that looks a little bit aggressive, and that is the cleaver. So as you can see, a cleaver is quite heavy, but it's also very good for using to cut things like vegetables. You can dice, mince, everything like this. You can also use it to crush garlic, ginger, and even cucumbers. Remember Luca in that video? A cleaver is very similar to a chef's knife, although there is one very clear difference. A cleaver is very good at cutting through bones. Now many Chinese people, they don't take the bones out of the meat when they cook. The reason for this is because the bones are very important at achieving the correct flavor profile in the dishes that they're creating. Remember the sweet and sour pork ribs that Luca made before? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Trust me when I say that you should definitely get one of these knives. It's very easy to use once you get over the fear of using a very large knife. Remember the Yangzhou stir fried rice? We talked a little bit about why that dish originated in Yangzhou. It is a city that was very famous in the past for its three knives. The razor, the pedicure knife, and the cleavers. Think of them as symbols for three flourishing industries in Yangzhou at that time. Barbering, the baths, and cookery. And what does a cleaver have to do with fried rice? Why? Yangzhou fried rice, besides being a great tasty recipe, is actually a complete show off when it comes to cutting skills. Because this recipe is all about using your cleavers to cut all the ingredients in small cubes of regular size. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Make sure that you also get yourself one of these Chinese... What the f***? Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting to be that heavy. Also make sure to pick yourself up one of these Chinese wooden cutting boards. They're gonna change your life and they're very good to pair with a cleaver so that you don't damage your tabletop and also you can get a good sturdy surface to cut those bones and meat on. Now the next tool that we have to talk about is the superstar on the internet nowadays. That's right, the wok. Now without a wok, there's basically no Chinese food because stir fry is basically the quintessence of Chinese food. Now, one of the first reasons that a wok is so important is because of the way that it can manage and handle very high heats. Because typically the temperature used to make stir fry is much, much higher than typical cooking methods that you would use a standard pot for. The wok was invented thousands of years ago and has been passed down from generation to generation of chefs. And it's also been evolving each step along the way. What? We can use other pots as a substitute for a wok? Or Okay, I'm gonna tell you the second and most important reason why a wok is very necessary, and that is the shape. So a wok obviously has rounded sides, and so for this, you're able to control the dish as you cook much easier, and you're able to spread it around and spread the heat so that everything cooks evenly as soon as possible. And the combination of the unique shape, as well as the high heat from the stove, is what creates the wok hay, or the wok breath which give the food a slightly burnt outer layer, but provides a very strong and very crispy, unique texture and flavor. It's just a little bit burnt, not over burnt. Also, remember that by using a wok more often, you will also be infusing the flavors into the pot so that when you make more dishes in the future, you'll have more flavors that are coming out from the pot and adding unique different textures and different small flavors and aromas into each of the dishes that you create with the same pot. Lastly, a wok is very versatile. It might be one of the most versatile pots on the market. It can be used for things like deep frying, stir frying, steaming, boiling, anything that you can imagine. A wok is for a lifetime, so make sure you treat it well and it will be with you throughout your entire life. Last but not least, don't forget about the superstar of the wok, which is also the lid. This is gonna be very important when you're braising dishes. Now the third utensil is the best friend of the wok, and that is a metal spatula. The spatula is the best tool for making stir fry. The reason for that is because the rounded edge of the spatula is the perfect shape to scrape the edges of the wok and push the foods around while you're cooking and stir frying inside of your wok. It helps you maneuver the generous amounts of food and seasonings that you have while spreading everything around evenly inside of the wok. You can find this kind, this kind, online for all very cheap prices. But the iron one is always the top recommendation because it's the old school version. And I'm not talking about the gangster rapper, Snoop Dogg, but you get my point. Now just one tip for you. Make sure that you don't use this metal spatula with any of your standard basic pans, especially a non-stick pan. That's a great way to make your whole family mad and to have to spend a lot of money on a new pan. Now the next thing we're going to introduce is this little thing. Do you know what this is? I'll give you three seconds to try and guess. Three, one. Okay, this 
is a wok brush. It is used while the wok is still hot by adding water into the hot wok and using the brush to scrape along the edges without using degreaser so that you can clean the wok and make sure that it doesn't rust over the long term. Now in order to maintain the layer on the outside of the wok, the bamboo strands have to be strong enough to get a proper clean while at the same time being soft enough not to damage the layer on the outside of that wok. Now a wok brush and a wok are like you and your significant other. Oh, you don't have a partner? Then it's definitely time to get a wok and a wok brush because no one can refuse someone that makes proper Chinese food. By the way, buying a wok brush does not mean that you know how to clean a wok. That is a different story that we will need a dedicated video for. Now we talked about four tools. We talked about the cleaver, the wok, the spatula, and the wok brush. But don't click on the channel next to this video because we still have five to go. And one of those five might actually just be the most important tool that you need for Chinese cooking. Some of you might have tried stir fry dishes abroad. Good for you. Very good, very good, very good. But stir fry is not the only cooking technique used in Chinese cuisine. This is a steaming basket. It's a very ancient tool and evidence shows that it's been used in Southern China for almost 5,000 years. They are made by removing the skin from the bamboo then soaking the skins in water wrapping the skins in a circle, and then hammering the skins using nails. The base is made from woven bamboo strips, and the production process can take anywhere from 15 minutes to several hours, depending on the size. Steaming baskets have become very prominent in the Western world because of its role in the cooking process of dim sum, which can be found in many places like cha chan tea, which literally translates as tea restaurant, and can be found in many places along the southern part of China, specifically in Hong Kong. Despite being called a tea restaurant, tea is one of the last reasons that you would go to one of these places. These baskets are designed to be stacked on top of one another so that many servings can be steamed simultaneously and they can also be placed properly on the table once they're being served. You can't even figure out which dishes you want to eat, so how can you have room in your stomach to drink tea? Do you remember the video we made on steamed dumplings? Nice one, right? And just remember that you can also replace the steaming sheets with nice Napa cabbage leaves as well. If you watched our dumpling recipe video, you must remember that Luca used some of our Chinese spicy sauce as dipping sauce. He had a wonderful experience. I'm sure you can find yours with Chinese spicy sauce as well. You can also go to our website, www.chineofficial.com, to check out our other sauces with different packaging options and spicy degrees. I'm sure you'll find one you love. Now, we're going to talk about chopsticks. As you know, Chinese people use chopsticks to eat their meal. But in fact, if you change the length of the chopstick, you can actually use them for cooking as well. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present the cooking chopsticks. And this is a normal pair of chopsticks. You can clearly see the difference in size. Chopsticks range from 23 centimeters, around 9.1 inches, to 26 centimeters, 10 inches long, and they taper to one end. Very long and large chopsticks range anywhere from 30 to 40 centimeters long which is around 12 to 16 inches. They are used for cooking, especially when doing things like deep frying. Chopsticks may have round, square, hexagonal, or other polygonal cross sections. This is used for deep frying and also for separating the ingredients within the wok. This provides for much more precision when cooking. And if you went to some hot pot restaurants, you may also find these cooking chopsticks because when making hot pot, it involves a big fire as well as a lot of steam. And so using these chopsticks is a great way to protect your hands from the steam of the pot. And now, this thing here is the favorite utensil of most Chinese people. And the reason for that is because this is a rice cooker. And rice is the absolute foundation of Chinese food. And the reason for that is because rice to Chinese people is like bread to many other people around the world. It is super easy to set up. Just wash the rice, removing any excess water, add the rice inside, add water so that the rice is completely covered, and then close it, press one button, and the job is done. Even better, you can also use a rice cooker to make many other types of dishes. For example, porridge, soup, or even steamed dishes on the inside of this rice cooker. And now is a combination of utensils. The first is the pot used for making hot pot. As you can see, there are two sides to the pot, which allows you to add two different types of broths at the same time. One side can be spicy and the other can be non-spicy, so that everyone in your family, regardless of whether they like spicy food or non-spicy food, can all be happy at the same table. And sometimes it comes along with an electric stove, which can be easily moved to the middle of the table 
to cook your hot pot while you're also eating at the same time. Some electric stoves in China are so versatile that they even come with a hot pot button. So with one press of a button, you're ready to go and make your hot pot. There are also some other functions like steaming, stir frying, deep frying. If you want to use this kind of electric stove to try other types of Chinese cooking, I highly recommend that you search online first to see which type of electric stove is suitable for your type of wok. Otherwise, your dish might turn out a little bit less desirable than you're hoping for. Trust me, these kits come with some very fancy options as well. Like one side electric hot pot with no separate electric stove. An extra barbecue section around the outside of the pot and so on. Choose the one that suits you and get cooking. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, is the most ancient utensil used in Chinese cooking, which has been used for over 20,000 years. Even after the invention of the rice cooker in 1956, Chinese people never abandoned this utensil. And that, my friends, is the clay pot. When cooking in a clay pot, the rice gains additional flavor from the pottery. The clay's porous materials, the metals in the clay, allow the rice to soak up more flavors from the meat and the vegetables while cooking. But the best part comes from the bottom of the pot, where a crispy layer of rice forms. Crispy rice, along with the fragrance of all the other flavors inside. Ooh, man, I can have this all day. And these dishes are one of the most popular types of Chinese cuisine all around the world, Cantonese cuisine. And there's even a dish, bao zai fan. The gravy fermented meat on top and the crispy layer of rice on the bottom. Oh man, I don't want to be a spoiler, but you have to try this when you have a chance. Clay pot can also be used for all sorts of other things, like soups and yes, stews. Remember the hong shao niu rou we made? All right guys, so I hope you learned some very interesting things in today's video. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also turn on the post notification bell so that you can see when we post our next video. And if you want, I would also love to share with you guys some Chinese pantry essentials, some seasonings and things that are necessary to make the best Chinese dish of your life. So until that time, enjoy your Chinese food, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.